This will be a fast-paced, complete walkthrough of building an AI with Unity's ML agents. Like a good TV chef, I already have a simple game prepared, which you can just clone from GitHub. Currently, it's just a human-controlled game, no machine learning involved. Yet! By pressing the space key, I can let the car jump to dodge the incoming vehicles, like cars do. Our goal for this video will be to train an AI via machine learning to do the same thing, hopefully better than we, or at least I, can. If you haven't watched my last video, now would be a great time, because the basic concepts discussed there will be applied now. This is a simple game on purpose. We can always increase the complexity later, but starting simple decreases the potential amount of bugs. I always try to start so simple that it's almost boring. If you open up the main scene, you can see a spawner object in the environment. Here you can determine the enemy cars being spawned and the interval they are being spawned with. Next, inside our spawner, our player is located with a simple script called Jumper that is uh, responsible for, well, um, jumping. The main protagonists in our ML agents world are, as the name implies, agents. So let's transform our Jumper into one. Instead of inheriting from Mono Behavior, it should inherit from Agent. Ta-da! It is now an agent. Next, we add a Behavior Parameter script to our player, because without it, our agent would basically be brainless. Let's name it something useful, like Jumper. Now for the hard part. We have to think about the observations our agent needs to collect, so what information does it require and what actions can it take. Let's start with the simple one first, actions. Our agent can jump and it can do nothing, that's it. So we have two options, which means we have a discrete action space with a size of two and just a single branch. Multiple branches are useful if we would want to combine movement and jumping, for example. Then we could use one branch for movement and one for jumping. A single branch would only allow movement or jumping, but not both at the same time. Check out the wall jump example if you want to learn more about that. In our case, a single branch will do. Next, the observations. Here, there is no right or wrong answer. Just try to think about a few possible ways an agent could observe the environment, how much data they each require, and how much filtering an agent has to do to infer useful information. Really, pause the video now and think about it. My idea is to start very simple. I think our agent really only needs the distance to the next car in order to time the jump right. So I will go with the raycast, which you can imagine like a laser beam shot out from the agent until it hits something. It can register if something was hit, what was hit, and how far the thing hit is away. As this is a very common way of observing, Unity has conveniently prepared a simple script we can use for that. Nice! Let's add the Ray Perception Sensor 3D component to our player. We can already see a preview of the rays being shot in the scene view. First we have to add the tags that are to be detected. In our case the enemy spawned have the tag called Mover, so let's add that. Next, Rays per Direction describes the number of rays to the left and right of center. As we only require a single center ray, we can set this value to, well, zero. The next relevant value is the ray length. In our case, it should at least go to the end of the road. To be safe, let's use 50 here. To make sure the rays are not hitting the ground, let's give them a vertical offset of 0.5 at the start and end. That's it. My advice, just play around with the sliders and see what happens to learn more. Raycasts are really powerful and the most common way of observing the environment besides the visual information. If we start the game now, we can see the rays being colored red if a car is in front. Great! It's working! The great thing about the sensor is that it automatically adds itself to the observations, so no additional code is required and we can set the observation size to zero because it is handled for us. Isn't this framework wonderful? <laughs> okay, 
Now let's jump into the jumper script. <laughs> okay. As learned in the last video, there are a few essential methods in the agent class. Initialize, on action receive and on episode begin. This time we actually don't need to collect observations because we are just using the sensor. But we should add the heuristic method. This is where the human input can be handled. Always test your agents by playing them manually first. You can find bugs easier and faster this way. First, let's move everything from the awake method into the initialize. Easy. Now we have to handle the actions. The onActionReceive method has a float array parameter, as we only have a single branch, only the first element is interesting for us. The value of this will either be a 0 or a 1, so again, very simple. Let's determine that a 0 is doing nothing and a 1 is jump. The great thing about coding nothing is that we have to, well, code nothing. Meaning we only have to check for the case of 1. Just to be safe, I will floor the flow to an int before equality checking. Bam, this is our action function. Easy. Now instead of checking the input in the update, we will check it inside the heuristic function. As the academy, which is calling the function, is running in Unity's fixed update loop, input checking can be a bit buggy. If we try to use key down or mouse down, so either use get key or get access to be sure no inputs get lost. Now, instead of calling the jump function, we have to modify the actions out, because action handling is managed by the onActionReceived function. Whatever we put into actions out is received by the onActionsReceived method. First, we set actions out to 0, and if a key is pressed, to 1. Basic stuff. Last but not least, we call the reset function in our onEpisodeBegin method. Now, if we start the game, we can see that nothing happens. This is because no decisions are requested right now. One way to change that would be to add a decision requester component to our player. This component is linked to the academy and requests a decision every nth academy step. If the value is set to 5, like right now, every fifth step. Let's set it to 1 for now to send a request every step. If we press play now, we can see, yay, it works. But I will remove the component again. Why? Because we can optimize it. While the car is in the air, there's nothing to do because jumping is only allowed while on the street. To simplify it, let's not even request a decision while the car is in the air. Imagine the brain being turned off for that time frame. Let's add the fix update method and request a decision if the jump is ready. That's it. Pressing play reveals that nothing has changed, at least on the outside. Great. Again, this is only one way of doing it. If you think of something else, try it. We are almost ready to train. But the most important part is still missing. Rewards. Everybody loves rewards, especially AIs. This part is easy again. But if you do it badly, you can really mess everything up. Don't worry though, most often the simple and straightforward way just works. A basic rule of thumb is a minus one punishment when losing and a plus one reward when winning. As this is a high score game, there is no winning, so I just decided to give it a 0.1 reward for each car. This is in no way the best designed reward system, but it works. If you are unsure, Testing with multiple runs and a predefined number of steps and then comparing the results is probably your best bet. More on testing later. In the script inside the onTriggerEnter method, we will call the addReward method. The score in this game works like this. Each car has a hidden cube behind itself that triggers the onTrigger method on collision. And then a score gets added. Simple. Next, in the onCollisionEnter method, we find the case where the player is hit by the incoming traffic. First, we replace the reset method with the end episode method. Next, we will add a negative reward here. That's it. To make sure it's working, I will print the cumulative reward at both occasions. Let's press play and check. Nice. As we expected. We can finally start training now. To optimize training, we should add multiple agents and build a standalone application. 
but I always test in the editor with a single agent first to spot any bugs. Right now this game is hopefully bug free, but as you can imagine, this wasn't always the case. Trust me when I say the first few training runs always fail for me. For example, in my spawner logic I checked the time in real life seconds. Game was sped up, the spawn rate wasn't, which slows down training time drastically. Furthermore I had cars falling below the road from time to time, then I forgot to assign text to incoming traffic so they couldn't even be detected by the ray cars, yada yada yada. You get the picture. Expect bugs and work carefully. You don't want to train for multiple hours just to notice that your AI is basically blind. Okay, now let's begin training. I will do some slight hyperparameter tuning, but don't worry, the file located in the repository already contains those changes. Hyperparameter tuning is a large topic in and of itself and definitely for another video. As I know that this is a simple environment, I will set the hidden units to 64. Next, mostly because we are using a discrete action space, I'm setting the batch size to 128 and the buffer size to 284. That's it. I assume Python with ML agents is already installed on your system. If not, watch my previous video. Again, check it out. Now, just open the terminal and cd into the repository and then into the trainer config folder. Now we start the training by putting in ML agents, then the path to our config file, which is trainer underline config.yaml, minus minus run ID equals, and then the name of our choosing, like in this case, jumper AI underscore one, and press enter. The Unity logo is always a good sign. Sometimes if it fails, just executing the command again can help, but this is looking good. So now we switch into the editor, press play and let it train for a good 10 minutes. Now is the time to watch the training process and see if you can spot any obvious bugs. If not, grab yourself a coffee and take a little break. Or use the time to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. 10 minutes later. We can already see the high score has improved. This is a great sign, but a closer look is always necessary. By putting in TensorBoard LogDeer summaries into another terminal tab, we can inspect it further. The graph on the left reveals the reward accumulated over time. We can see that around the 8 minute mark the first real improvement started happening and then it got better very quickly. This is good. It confirms that our environment is working. The next step is to train with multiple agents to speed up and stabilize the training. In our case, this is as easy as copying the environment game objects multiple times. How to build environments that are easily copyable like this, again, topic for another video, in this case, it just works. Again, we first press play and test if everything still seems fine. It does, it works, great. Now let's start a second training process, again in the editor, just to make sure multiple agents are working as expected. We will just use the same command as before, but change the ID so we can compare the runs. Again, watch out for any obvious bugs, take a little break or if you haven't yet, leave a like if this is somehow helpful to you. I would love to crack 100 likes with this video. Let's wait for 10 minutes again so we can probably compare the two runs. 10 minutes later. Okay, it's pretty obvious that this has worked well. Again, to make sure, let's open up TensorBoard. We can see our second graph is way larger. This is because we processed many more steps in the same time due to the amount of agents we have. Again, this is why we start simple. We were able to validate that our environment was working in a few minutes of training time instead of hours. And now, for proper and complete training, we can build the application, executing the ML agents command again, this time referencing our build, setting the time scale to 10, meaning 10 times the speed, which has worked good on my system, the graphics quality level to zero and window width and height to 512. Then uh, if I would be able to spell height correctly, yeah, it runs our application and starts training. We can always stop it by pressing Ctrl C. I will let it train for a little bit. 
Okay, now that we are happy with the result, we press Ctrl C. Then a model gets generated. We can drag this model into our project, select all the agents and put it into the model slot. If we press play now, we can see it executing our model. Be proud, you have trained an AI. How many people have done that? If you got lost somewhere on the way, you can always check out the tutorial completed branch in the repository. There you can find the project with the trained model and the finished scripts. I would encourage you to play around with this project and create your own twist. I would love to see how you modified and expanded the environment. Just tweet a clip of your environment or a link to your repository at me. I will showcase some of them in my next video. I spend a lot of time preparing the environments, recording audio and cutting the video. Support in any way is much appreciated. Thanks to Todd Fine for gifting $5 on Patreon really means a lot to me as a small creator just starting out. As always, tell me what you think, what you want to see. Have a great week. Peace.